The Windsor engine family has been a huge part of Mustang history ever since the beginning and then all through the 60s, 70s, 80s, and even into the 90s. Then in 1996, Ford announced the Windsor engine was going away and being replaced by a new 4.6 liter engine. Now, if you were around at the time like I was and were into Mustangs, you remember everybody freaked out. You know, it's a smaller motor. How's it going to make horsepower? We're not going to be able to tune it. I don't want overhead cams. You know, this, 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 no, this is the end. I'm keeping my 5 liter forever. And a lot of people were afraid of the modular engine, and a lot of Ford enthusiasts kind of turned their back to it. But over the years, we've learned to accept the modular and even realize that, you know what, it's a really good engine, and it's going to power Mustangs for a long time to come and be able to make a lot more power a lot easier than these old engines. So today we're talking about the history of the Ford modular engine. Okay, so before we get too far into it, let's discuss what a modular engine is. Now, we'll refer to them as mod motors, which a lot of people do, but it's part of the modular engine family. We're going to focus on the Mustang versions, and for now, mainly the 4.6 and the 5.4 liter. Now, what is a modular engine? Well, it is a small block V8, just like the previous 5 liter pushrod engine. The difference with the modular engine, though, is the cams are not located in the block, they're now overhead cam engines, which means the cam is located in the cylinder head. Now there's going to be two versions we're going to talk about, your single overhead cam which has one cam per cylinder head, and your dual overhead cam which has two cams per cylinder head. Now why is it called a modular engine? Well a lot of people think that's because it's designed to be interchanged where you can put these heads on this block and move these parts around and the bell housing from a 5.4 will fit a 4.6 and stuff like that. A lot of that's true, but it's actually not the reasoning. Ford uses the modular term for the production of the engine. The tooling and the stuff used to produce the engines allows them to be much easier to swap out from platform to platform and from engine to engine. So basically, there's a lot less downtime for tooling changes because they share a lot of the tools and a lot of the pieces used to put these engines together, hence the modular name. So again, it's not about interchangeability of parts, it's basically about how the engines are being built and how they're being assembled and installed in vehicles on Ford's production line. Ford began working on the modular engine family back in the 80s, and the very first vehicle to receive one in the production line was the 1991 Lincoln Town Car. The engine in the Lincoln Town Car was a 4.6 liter, two valve per cylinder, single overhead cam engine that made 190 horsepower and 260 pound-feet of torque. Despite being smaller at 281 cubic inches versus the 302 cubic inch engine it replaced, the 91 Lincoln was actually quicker than the previous model. In 1993, Ford upped the game again with the Lincoln Mark 8. The Mark 8 came with a 4.6 liter engine, but now it was a four valve per cylinder dual overhead cam engine, and this high-tech engine featured an Italian-made aluminum block and made 280 horsepower and 285 pound-feet of torque. Ford also made a front-wheel drive version of the dual overhead cam engine and used in the 1995 Lincoln Continental. And the 1996, the 4.6 liter became the standard engine in the Ford Mustang. When the 4.6 liter engines arrived in Mustangs, Ford fans just really weren't ready for the technology, as the only other time you saw that technology in the sports car world was in the V8 Corvette ZR1, which was a rare and very expensive car. In comparison, the outgoing 1995 Mustang with a 5 liter engine made 215 horsepower and 285 pound-feet of torque in GT trim, and 240 horsepower and 285 pound-feet of torque in Cobra trim. The new 96 GT got the single overhead cam version of the 4.6 modular engine and came in at the same power ratings as the GT50 at 215 horsepower and 285 pound-feet of torque. But most tests found the GT to actually be slower than the previous model because a lot of the bottom end torque wasn't there that they were used to from the previous pushrod engine. All of that changed when the dual overhead cam 32 valve Cobra showed up. The newest Cobra now came with an aluminum block, four cam 32 valve heads, and they were all hand built. This motor made 305 horsepower and 300 pound-feet of torque, making it far more horsepower and torque than the previous pushrod engine. Owners also quickly realized that these Cobra engines loved to rev, and a gear swap to anything starting with a four made these cars quite quick for their time. The 4.6 liter single overhead cam and dual overhead cam engine stayed with the Mustang GT and Cobra all the way through 2004 with a few small changes and one big one in 2003. In 1999, the single overhead cam GT got the performance improved, now commonly known as the PI head swap. Along with a slightly revised intake, the GT jumped to 260 horsepower and 302 pound-feet of torque, making it quite quicker than the previous model. 
The Cobra for this air also received new heads, new cams, and a new intake, and was rated at 320 horsepower and 317 pound-feet of torque, but there were issues with these engines, and many of them made far less power than advertised. The Cobra was actually dropped in 2000, but came back with the same rating, but at least making the advertised horsepower. After another year off in 2002, Ford changed the game in 2003 with the new Mustang Cobra. Featuring a revised 4.6 liter dual overhead cam engine, along with a root style supercharger, the Terminator, as it became known, packed 390 horsepower and 390 pound-feet of torque. Unlike the 99 Cobra, many of the three owners actually found more power than advertised, and the durability of this engine, along with the ease of modifying it, made the 0304 Cobra into the legend it is today. In 2003, Ford also offered a naturally aspirated version of the 4.6 dual overhead cam, making 305 horse and 320 pound-feet of torque in the Mustang Mach 1. 2005 was a huge year for the Mustang, with an entirely new model being launched featuring retro looks and a brand new modular engine, the 4.6 liter 3-valve. Like the outgoing GT engine, the 3-valve was a single overhead cam engine, but the 3-valve had two intake valves and one exhaust valve, which improved airflow. It was also the first mod motor with variable cam timing that allowed the cam to retard or advance timing, which offered even more power and throttle response. Speaking of throttle response, it was now a throttle by wire, so there was no more cable going from the gas pedal to the throttle body, it was all done electronically. What did that add up to? 300 horsepower and 320 pound-feet of torque. These were the numbers that the naturally aspirated Cobras were making, and now it's coming in your Mustang GT. So what about the Cobra? Well, the Cobra name went away and was replaced by the 2007 GT500. Just like the 2003 Cobra, Ford went all in with the new GT500 and wanted to dominate the performance market. The GT500 received a 5.4 liter version of the mod motor and was topped with dual overhead cam 32 valve heads. Ford engineers also said that wasn't enough and topped it with an Eaton Root style supercharger. The result, 500 horsepower, 480 pound-feet of torque, making it the most powerful production Mustang ever built. As we all know, making a lot more horsepower with a 5.4 liter GT500 is not at all difficult to do. So that brings us to 2010. The Mustang got a complete refresh, but the three valve 4.6 liter stuck around for one more year because we knew Ford had something coming down the pike. And what was that engine? We all know it, the Coyote. Now the Coyote was an absolute game changer for Ford, so much so that we think it actually deserves its own video. So if you haven't already, click that subscribe button, keep it here for future tech talks, including our upcoming video on one of the greatest engines Ford ever produced, the five liter Coyote.